Yesterday, 25-year-old bank employee Connor Sturgis opened fire at his Louisville, Kentucky workplace, killing five people, all the while live-streaming the attack on Instagram. Now, according to the AP, the shooter legally bought the weapon he used a week ago from a local dealer. That's per local police. Here's Louisville police giving an update. We cannot get into specific details on what we recover at this time because, again, the investigation is ongoing. And we want to make sure that we're providing accurate information. The family deserves that and the community deserves that. We also would like to share that later on this afternoon, we will be releasing body-worn camera footage of the incident. And so that information at the time will be released to you and the location so everyone will be privy to that information. Now, from what we know about the suspect so far is that friend and families called Sturgis friendly with no red flags necessarily, though new reporting is calling out that the former athlete did suffer from multiple concussions. And right. So he was an athlete who apparently played um, high school basketball and was known to always wear a helmet while he played mm -hmm. because he had already experienced so many concussions he didn't want ad additional head trauma. Yeah, so that is actually, so I'm going to get back to that in a minute. First, the most relevant factor is he did work at this bank mm -hmm. and he was about to be fired. Mm -hmm. uh, he was being fired. You know, we talk a lot in mass shooting situations about, you know, what are the political motivations or the ideology of the shooter? That always gets a lot of attention from the media. And then we argue about how much attention should we actually pay to it? You know, this, is this a crazy person? Does it what matter what their views are? Um, I know from looking at statistics that workplace motivated violence is just it it so vastly outnumbers violence for like discernible political ideological mm. reasons it is under discussed um by comparison so this is so this is actually you know if anyone's reacting like oh wow this never happens actually this is much more common yeah, than it, people killing someone because they don't like your political views or yeah, something. people were pointing out that the a lot of the, the idea of um you know school shootings happen in schools because there's not People armed with guns in schools. School, you know, shootings never happen at banks because there's people armed and protecting banks. There's security, and we should arm schools. Some people are saying that this is mm -hmm. an example of why that even is insufficient. You know, if someone can walk into a bank now, this was before the bank was open. It was during some morning meeting that he and his fellow employees were supposed to be having, and this was a, like, as you're saying, mm -hmm. a targeted attack. But what could potentially stop something like this? Well. That make, makes people look at the fact that he was able to buy a gun legally. There are no red, 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 ugh, excuse me, red flag laws um, in Kentucky. It's not clear that if there, I'm had, not sure been if there red, had been one, yeah, in this there had case, been red flag laws, difference. if it would have made a difference. Because although some people have pointed to this concussion stuff, and there, there, some friends or family had indicated that they thought that he was dealing with some mental health issues. It's not clear that that would have raised mm -hmm. to the level of being reported uh, in a way that he could have gotten um, caught. But some people might say. Could, should he have been able to get a gun so quickly? Regardless, there were also some questions about permitting. You're allowed to carry without a permit in Louisiana. Again, not sure that would have made a difference mm -hmm. because who would have caught him beforehand? Um, but these are all questions that, of course, will be percolating as they continue to unpack this. The concussions thing, look, is interesting and, and should be looked at, you know, maybe from, I don't know, from autopsy or if you can tell anything like that. Because I, I, I think, uh, you know, head trauma can make people behave in really disturbed ways. Um, there is a, a I, this is a theory that some people have about the Texas Tower shooter. If you remember that from decades ago, this was a shooting at mm -hmm. the University of Texas where a sniper um, uh, it went up in the tower and shot. It's a horrible, horrible thing that happened and was shooting people willy-nilly on the ground. And actually the fact that so many people at the time were armed, actually they were eventually able to like, like he couldn't, he couldn't fire because he, people were shooting back at him. Mm. So rapidly, um, but nobody really understood the motivation for the shooting. What well, it, it, there is a theory that he had a a a, a, a brain tumor pressing on his brain, mm. and that that is why he could have behaved the way he did. Mm. So th this is what this made me think of that you know the people yeah, who have terrible it, head trauma. Yeah, it's. I'm sure they'll find out. Of course, later today we're gonna get we're gonna get the body cam footage. Um, Charles Whitman, that was the shooter. That oh, was. interesting. So, you know, st stay tuned, and we'll, we'll find out more about that. Um, and moreover, a apparently there was this live stream that was taken down um, that was going on You know, I time. absolutely understand, of course, why the social media companies would immediately take that down. But 
Uh, and I remember I, I raised this in the context of a, of a different shooting when uh, maybe it was me and Kim talking about this a year or so ago. But if you were in a situation, this, maybe this wasn't the situation here, but if you were in a situation where there's an active shooter and like you're hiding and it's being live well, it streamed, I wouldn't down. necessarily. It wasn't taken down yeah. until after he was dead, apparently. Yeah, I, 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 in the, in the, I mean, there could be a real reason for someone like trapped in a building with a mass shooter to like want to be able to right. watch the. I mean, God forbid. Obviously, that sounds right. terrible. But well, it seems like he was, this this situation was handled relatively effectively by the Good police. Response one from of the police. the, the um, uh, at least one of the people shot was, was a police officer. officer that was running toward the uh, shooting. So this is, does not seem like one of those Evalde situations. It seems mm -hmm. like it was handled relatively well. But yeah, I mean the the other kind of pattern that is, has emerged is this is another uh, use of an AR-15 style rifle. And of course, there will be questions about whether a different kind of gun that fired less rapidly would have been mm -hmm. able to cause as much damage and been as difficult for law enforcement to subdue. Mm. Yeah, that's uh, what we'll be looking at and discussing, obviously. I, I, I wonder if in the wake of Uvalde, it really has finally taken hold at police departments that like, like do not, you know, do not wait around. Do you have to rush into the sound of gunfire? Um, you're going to be, you know, you, you don't want to be in the position of being deservedly humiliated the way the police department was there. Yeah, I mean, it's a, t it's a tough situation. I mean, the gun debate is framed as um, having kind of law enforcement on the side of um, those who are advocating for more expansive gun rights, but they are also the ones that are being tasked with running into the face of automatic and semi-automatic weapons uh, that have such incredible killing power. I think it's a, the last time I, I looked at it, I, I think police unions are somewhat split on it. Really? Some uh, now police unions are obviously. And probably increasingly, as the you know, as we as everyone sorts themselves into their correct partisan <laughs> uh, position, police unions becoming more associated with Republicans, even though public employees unions are overwhelmingly a Democratic coalition. Uh, so I wonder if that's changing their view on gun because if you're going to be in the tough. Republican coalition, you got to be for uh, for gun rights. But generally, police unions have not been super supportive of yeah. of gun rights. Yeah. One, one last point is worth noting is that we know from the uh, dispatcher audio that the uh, killer left a voicemail saying he felt quote suicidal and quote. I mean, plan to, quote, kill everyone at the bank. Mm. So there's no real questions about the motive here, anything like that, as you yeah. said, Robbie. It's just a question of whether or not there's any political appetite to do, you know, to support the kind of interventions that might have prevented even a right. someone who's motivated by professional animus and who is going to be fired from getting the tools that he's able to use to, to kill right. his Right, I mean, but it, it sounds like a big... Who knows in this case because it, it doesn't sound like there was necessarily a lot to indicate um, that wrongdoing was coming. But yeah. we'll continue to explore that and have more rising after this.